I'm <laughs> oh, we'll get, what, what? Hey, it's Tuesday night. Welcome back to the craft. We got a great show. We say that every week, but this one is especially special. We've got Jeff Cook, Clyde Peeling's Reptile Land. We're going to talk about Croctoberfest. Yeah. And our special musical guest, singer songwriter Eric Val, and Josh Chalk. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Welcome to the Q Brew Network, and thank you for joining us once again for this week's edition of The Craft, your number one source for everything craft, from brewing to the local craft beer scene, as well as the area's finest entertainment and artists that the Susquehanna Valley has to offer. So grab yourself a cold one and sit back and enjoy. Oh, hey, welcome. <laughs> didn't see you there. We didn't see you there. Hello. Welcome back to the craft. Come. Come. Have a seat. Join us. It's That's Tuesday night, fellas. <laughs> That's an airplane. Yeah, Airplanes airplane. are flying low. Jeez, we're getting... Jeez, Trump's not even elected yet. Holy <laughs> crap. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, political no-nos. Political uh, no-nos. We're a bipartisan podcast. We are a bipartisan podcast. Part, bipartisan what? <laughs> what bipartisan what? podcast. Bipartisan podcast. Yes. Repeat after me. Bipartisan podcast. Sure. Sure. To my left, my good friend. Chaz Michael Michaels. Chaz Michael Michaels is is is, is the name for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Chaz. <laughs> Way to go, Chaz. Becky Blue. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. What are you wearing? What, what, what shirt? You always have the interesting, most yeah, interesting looks, things. Looks like a Mayan or Aztec. Oh, Jason's on the right yeah. track. At first, I thought it was like a Transformers thing or something. I I, I was at a Indian casino last weekend. Okay. And they sold these shirts in the front lobby for dirt cheap. Okay. And it's a tribal design. Nice. But I've had and people tell me yeah. that it kind of looks like the design that was on the TV show Lost. And the Dharma Initiative hatch. It so. does, actually. You're right. You're right. It does. Interesting. I I'm, do. a, I'm up on my ancient aliens, and I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, and that, that's definitely uh, South American. Our our very own ancient <laughs> alien, Jason Kinney. Hey, what's happening? All right. <laughs> and he always does a great job on the board every week. Sean Walver. Boy, I Sean. try. Uh, I try. You know, and he never gets enough credit for what he does. He really does a nice job. He does. Yeah. He, does. he doesn't call his mother, but enough. No. But oh, no, there we he doesn't. Go. There Hi, we go. Hi, Carol. <laughs> and I'm sure you're tuning in tonight. I'm trying. I, I really try. Great show tonight, man. We've been looking forward to this. This is a great week for us. It certainly uh, is. Uh, we're gonna hit. Uh, we're gonna hit Croctoberfest uh, this Saturday at Clyde Peeling's Reptile Land. Coming up later in the show, Jeff Cook. And uh, we were a little disappointed Jeff didn't bring any critters for us, but... Well, some of us were relieved. Well, yeah, I'm Very relieved. relieved. Uh, we, we were, I'm glad there's no snakes, but uh, I was kind of hoping for a crocodile or something. Yeah, that would have been cool. We're going to talk about uh, crocodilian conservation. Yes. And uh, we're going to talk about the show and uh, the beer show, the, the, the event, Croctoberfest, and... That'll be great. Well, hey, before we uh, before we really get into the show, I just want to touch on it. We had a great show last week. Awesome. And by the way, twenty two almost twenty two hundred people tuned in and caught our show. Right on. Which Thanks is for awesome. watching, guys. Awesome. Thank you, folks. But we did have the River at Brew Trail down here, and I have the list of uh, the dates and the venues for Pints for Prostates. And uh, that would be starting out on November 12th. Good friends of ours at Old Forge. Uh, they will have the Backyard Ponies there. A uh, dollar from every pint that night will be donated. Also, for the entire month of November, a portion of the proceeds from the collaboration that they're having with Marley's will also be donated. Oh, yeah, super. Stuff. And then our good friend Rob Antonitis at Civil War Cider, who's doing their trivia show again tonight. Uh, they, on the 12th through the, 12th through the 15th, there's a dollar donation from every pint sold from their collaboration with Cover Bridge. Oh, cool. And then you have the rest of them. 
I have the rest of them. Uh, November nineteenth, uh, one dollar donation. Uh, one dollar donation off of uh, what? Uh, off of every pint at uh, at Marzoni's. <laughs> Marzoni's is uh, donating a buck off of every pint, right? Yes. Okay. On the November nineteenth. On November nineteenth, and uh, our friends at Rusty Rails on uh, November twenty sixth, ten percent of all sales, all sales will be uh, donated uh, to uh, pints for prostates. And for the latest information on this, uh, uh, this certainly a worthwhile uh, cause, uh, you can uh, visit the River Rat Brew Trail at uh, riverratbrewtrail.com. Very good. All right. Sean, you got us all sounding like Donald Trump last night. The heavy breathing <laughs> is going on right now. Wow. That's I think not, we all have colds. That's not me. That's that's uh, little Wheezy over there. That's here. Wheezy McButterpants <laughs> here. Wheezy McButterpants. So I was just wondering about that myself. I just pulled down the bubble. I'm adjusting it. And Do I sound dirty wheezy? bubble? Wheezy. Yeah, you're, you're, there's a lot of like... <sighs> yeah. So... Yeah, yeah well, after, after we just praised him, too, for the nice job he does. Yeah. I can't help emphysema. I don't have a button <laughs> for that. <laughs> Seriously, COPD is not one of my uh, dials. Well, I, I, God love you, Sean. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough, since I came in the room, my nose started running, so I don't, I don't know. Maybe I have allergies or something. So, Becky, you woke up Friday morning. Thanks for your concern, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that. Moving on. Forget your runny nose. <laughs> And your COPD. <laughs> so you, you just woke up on Friday morning and decided to drive five, six hours up north? I woke up and I, I had a friend who said, hey, there's this opportunity. And I threw my stuff in my backpack and I ended up in Niagara Falls backstage at a great show. That's how my parents got married. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm actually, I just spoke with him again um, this morning, and I'll be doing the same thing again Friday, so I'm going to miss Croctoberfest, but I will be getting up to Lake George, New York. Okay, do tell, what was the trip for? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. A little bit more detail than, hey, I got up and I went. <laughs> okay, I went to so Niagara this, Falls. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is the story. Okay. I, okay, you guys are familiar with the 90s band Spin Doctors. Yes, absolutely. Well, Little Miss Can't Be Wrong. Yeah, yeah. The something princes. Three princes? Yeah, two princes. Right. Two princes? Or, yeah. Pocket full of kryptonite. <laughs> Pocket full of kryptonite. All that kind of stuff. Yes, yeah, so all the famous songs. <laughs> <laughs> But what most people don't know is that their most uh, recent album is called If the River Was Whiskey. They're doing blues now. So the spin doctors are putting out If this the river. river was whiskey, we wouldn't leave the island. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't have to brew. Well, that's true. You wouldn't, be, you wouldn't have to brew. Yes. There'd probably be a lot of canoes out there front, be. too, every Tuesday night. There would be. <laughs> okay, please continue. I'm sorry for the interruption. <laughs> But anyhow, they've they've recently they're, the stuff that they're doing now is blues. It's really cool, funky sounding stuff, and they're on the circuit doing these blues festivals and playing all over. And a friend of mine is their, um, I guess you would call manager. Okay. So um, there ended up that they were just like, "Hey, Becky Blue, we're playing on the East Coast. Want to come and hang out?" And I picked up some guitars and a big uh, rented van, and we drove to Niagara Falls and got to unload and be there for the sound checks and hang and cool. talk and yeah. So I, 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 it was like it just rained rock and roll from the sky, out of nowhere. The guys are cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're going to Lake George to do the exact same thing. Exact same thing for the Adirondack. Um, I think it's called the Adirondack Independence Music Festival. And there's a whole, there pl there's the festival goes Friday and Saturday, and there's a whole bunch of funk going on. And so, uh, so the Spin Doctors were playing, like you got to see them play and everything. Like oh that yeah, I was I was in their green room and everything. Like, cool. and they're really nice guys. So I was cool. backstage the whole time, and then I um. Did they have any odd requests for green room stuff? No, or... no, they didn't really have. Uh, they had a, they had it set up pretty nice though. They did. There was okay. a little bit of everything. Cool. Yeah, except the cold cuts really made the room smell like gym class, though. Are you sure it was the cold cuts? <laughs> <laughs> if you put cold cuts in a small room, that hoagie smell is not good. Well, 
I'm going to let it go. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we got no comment on yeah. that. Local. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, tell us about the wall. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so my Facebook fan, friends got to check it out. But um, the there there are two venues within the Seneca uh, Casino. One, you know, seats a couple thousand for okay. a show. And one that's really small called the Bear's Den, and it seats like 400, 500 people. So that's where this show was at. And um, But coming up uh, from the green room and, you know, up behind the stage, there's a whole wall leading up the ramp that's signed from every single person who's been back that, that hallway. Okay. So there are, like, um, bands and people that, like, tribute bands, too. Everybody is on this wall, and... Um, I got to take some footage of it. I got to put a little Becky Blue dot All on right. it. A little Becky Blue, you know, hanging out with Cindy Lauper. So All right. You so you signed between Cindy Lauper and Cool in the Gang. Cool in the Gang. That's very cool. <laughs> so so they they allow anybody to, to... <laughs> Oh, that was <laughs> rude. I didn't right. mean it that way. I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> with permission. <laughs> with permission. Well, I didn't I didn't know. I'm, what happened to you not talking so tonight? <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, okay. anybody, hey, anybody who wants to drive up to uh, the, you the falls, you can just start signing walls anywhere. <laughs> it probably says Hanson sucks somewhere. On one of those walls. <laughs> oh, Barbara. You're killing me. You're killing me. Did you get Did you get pictures of where yeah, you signed? Yeah, and... it was. Yeah, and then the. the uh, I had I was sat through you know the sound check and everything so I got to kind of hear a lot of it but I I only stayed f- inside the den f- to see like the first half hour of the show because then I went out front and sold their merchandise for them. Oh, nice. So, and then we had a meet and greet uh, kind of thing. The guys came out you know to the merch table with me and hung out and. The casino people are really cool. They, you know, have their little tiny ear pieces and stuff, mm-hmm. and they, you know, they were all really cool to me. And got to. Did know. you get to jam with them at all? A little um, bit, maybe. I think really. next time you break that ice. This weekend, look out! Look out! Lake George. Some Becky. Here Blue, I come. Some Becky Blue music. Right. There is some Becky Blue music news. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. So I was telling you guys at the uh, end of the summer, end of August, when I was in the studio, you know, doing some original music, and we finally have that on, almost ready to be in hand. The artwork for the CD is being done as we speak. Okay. And I should have them by October 5th. Super. And I'm very excited about that. We're excited as well. We're looking (laughs) forward to that. We're certainly looking forward to that. But enough about me. Enough about me. How about you, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't bring myself to watch Son of Zorn. You couldn't? I wanted to watch that. I No way. There's no way. It looks, that's uh, the dumbest oh, no, premise. That, that looks great. It looks, <laughs> it looks just dumb enough Come to Come on. You watch work. Mike Tyson's Mysteries. Come on, dude. Yeah, that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> well, how do you Is know it, it wasn't funny if you didn't watch it? Come on. It's a cheap He-Man ripoff. It is, but... Yeah, but mm. there's like real, like real. But he's a suburban right. father. Well, when you DVR it, I'll watch it. Okay, we'll we'll have to check it out. We'll have to check. Can't be that anywhere. Out. Some Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Mike the Mike got the mental <laughs> way. Come on, it, Son of Zorn doesn't have pigeon. <laughs> That's true. That's true. The ghost guy I could deal without. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, have we uh, officially derailed? No, we haven't derailed. Oh, fantastic. Let's get back on track, though. Let's get back on track. Uh, we've, we've got uh, some busy months ahead, uh, of course, uh, and we're going to talk about this shortly. Uh, 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 Croctoberfest coming up this Saturday. Two weeks from that, uh, we've got uh, Oktoberfest here in the Grove at the Speedway, uh, the first ever. We're looking certainly looking forward to that event. And confirmation's up. Um, we had a great shout out from uh, Autos and Ales, so we'll be out there in Hershey, Pennsylvania. At the, yeah, that is a lot of fun. That is a lot of fun. If uh, it, it's a bit of a drive for you, you know, um, you know for the local folks, but uh, you know, shack up for the night. It's a great event. The, uh, did uh, the uh, the Speedway uh, thing? Did they at the street fair? Did they have a, a whole um, 
a stand and everything like that, and had sure. some uh, chicks with the 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 leader hosen or whatever it's called, uh-huh. walking around and stuff. And I I, I was only at I the wasn't street. there. I, I saw some pictures. I did but. see leader hosen, Amy. Okay. I got to hang out with Amy. Amy strutted through with the leader hose and yeah, I thought there. I saw a couple of pictures about uh, with yeah. that going on. So, well, we'll That's have cool. more That's information cool. about that show next week. Next week, yes. certainly, because our guest next week, I believe, <laughs> will be Sean Christine, <laughs> former, right. former mayor and current fire chief. Okay, right for right. the DH and L's. For the DH and L's, yes, yes. You're you're speaking my right. language. The DH and L's. The DH and L's. Jerry, I think we needed to go to our first break here and find you an inhaler. Do do I really sound that bad? <laughs> really? <laughs> Sorry, I, 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 the bubbles I, turned up, man. The dirty bubble. The dirty bubble. <laughs> it's yeah, it's not, not the bubble. <laughs> I don't know. I do have a little bit of a. I guess I'm coming down with something. So hey, uh, we're gonna take a quick. <laughs> we're gonna take a quick break. Don't let anybody use my mic. You'll catch it. Uh, we'll be right back with Jeff Cook from Clyde Peeling's Reptile Lamb. We're going right. to talk uh, crocodiles. We're going to talk beer and uh, reptilian, crocodilian conservation. Conservation. We'll be right back <laughs> on right. the craft brought to you by the Isla Q Brewing Company. Welcome back to The Craft, brought to you by the Isle of Q Brewing Company, 6 University Avenue in downtown Seals Grove. The best beer you can't quite buy yet. We're getting closer. We're about, yeah. what, two weeks away from getting uh, the final permitting rolling? Yep. So yeah. that's, uh, that's pretty exciting. Right. It's so. been, God, it's been a long <laughs> road, man. <laughs> it has been. It's like, I don't know. I, I was going to say it's like giving birth, but I don't know what, that, <laughs> what that's like. <laughs> Jeff Cook from Clyde Peeling's Reptile Land. We're going to talk Croctoberfest tonight. Jeff, welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, thanks for making the trip down. <laughs> the, um, uh, uh, the, the, what, what is, I mean, what's the focus of this event? What, what, what is the purpose? Well, to have fun, uh, drink some beer. Okay. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's called Croctoberfest to play on Oktoberfest because it, it, cause it uh, benefits uh, crocodilian conservation. 
the funds will go to a uh, committee um, that is run by the American Zoo Association called the Crocodilian Advisory Group. These are a bunch of uh, people from a number of different institutions that have dealt with alligators and crocodiles of all different species in their institutions and um, in other countries in the wild, too. Okay. And uh, they uh, work on projects to uh, help conserve population, wild populations of crocodilians. Let's boil down that word crocodilian. Now, does that, what does that entail? Is it just what we think of as crocodiles? Does it include alligators? In this country, we have alligators and we have some crocodiles. Okay. Very tip of Florida. Um, but crocodilians overall is alligators. There are two species of alligators in the world. The American alligator and the Chinese alligator. Okay. The rest the are Chinese be... are always knocking us off. <laughs> 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 but they don't export them. They don't export them. Okay. Um, crocodiles uh, uh, are found in the southern tip of Florida. Not very many of them left. Uh, some in South America and then Africa, Asia, Australia. In South America, there are caimans which are caimans. Caimans, uh, okay. <laughs> if you describe them, they're the ones with like the, the thin snout but the bulbous nose at the end? Well, no, that's the gharial. Oh. I'm getting to that. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> but no, there are several species of caimans in South America, one being the dwarf caiman, the smallest uh, species of crocodilian. Uh, and then... You mentioned the gharial. That's the one in India with a very skinny snout with the, the bulbous nose. Um, those actually get quite large, but they are primarily fish eaters, so they're really not a threat to humans at all. Um, so there you have it. Alligators, crocodiles, caimans, and gharials are all crocodilians. All crocodilians. Wow. So, okay. so how how did the if we have a Chinese species that got here, just uh, someone bringing it to to the U.S. I guess, and just it someone just let it loose, or uh, how, how did that happen? <laughs> well, the American alligator is different than the Chinese alligator. Um, you could glance at them and they'd look similar, but the Chinese alligators only grow to be about six feet long tops. What's the tops on? Uh, American alligator? They can grow 12, 13, 14. Yikes. The males. Wow, that's as big as this room. I, you know, <laughs> it is, pretty now, much. what is the, uh, the Rocky and Adrian? What, what breed is that? That's the American alligators. American alligators? And how big are they? Well, Rocky is uh, just about 12 feet. And around 650 pounds. Holy crap. <laughs> and then wow. Adrian is about uh, eight and a half feet, and around 250. So to, to move them, you would need a crane or, or, or something, right? <laughs> I would imagine. Well, or, I guess they don't move unless they want to. <laughs> right. That's right. Um, <laughs> now, are they very fast on land? Not really. Not really? I mean, there are a few species of crocodilians that could, that could uh, dart fairly fast for a very short distance but no they're they're much swifter in the water now is there a huge difference between your saltwater uh versions of the crocodile and your freshwater ones well yeah the the, the largest species of crocodilian is a one called the saltwater crocodile those are the ones found in northern australia and in new guinea um they call them saltwater crocodiles because they have a higher tolerance to brackish and salt salt water. Mm. Uh, they have been found out, you know, offshore and in ocean waters, but they still prefer fresh water tributaries and and maybe brackish areas. Right. But so those what, they they can get like over twenty feet. So so what so what's <laughs> the most dangerous to humans? What, what species is that? I guess anyone that's hungry at the time. Oh, I guess. <laughs> well, I mean. The one that's closest to you. That's right. <laughs> right. No, actually, there there are two species of crocodilians that can get big enough 
to consider humans a food item. The saltwater crocodile I just mentioned, and then the Nile crocodile found in Africa. Are there any that you would consider docile compared to the other ones? Well, um, I, m I mentioned the gharial. Uh, they're fish eaters. So even a, an 18-foot one, they can, they can get that big. <laughs> Wouldn't awesome. even consider a person wow. a, a, as a prey item. All right. Is there any truth to the story about mm -hmm. flipping them over and rubbing their belly? What's what's that whole myth about? <laughs> right, you know, you've seen it before. Huh? I'm not sure I have. It works with me, but I don't know about that. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I do that with the wiener dogs, but that's <laughs> they like that. <laughs> Actually, there's a little bit of that. Uh, rubbing their belly does nothing, but sometimes if you flip them over and and if you know they may struggle a little bit, but. Uh, they theory that, that blood runs to a certain part of the brain that just sort of puts them into a bit of a stupor. So, hmm. that's see? aha. Now, which well, I heard like when they open their mouth, they can't see. Now, is I mean, it closed their eyes. I've heard the crocodiles, alligators, like they that's their or they something. I heard when they open their mouth, something else, some one of their senses shut down. No, I don't. I don't believe so. Well, then I'm watching the wrong channel. You're watching. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're talking about sharks. I'm, the, the, the I'm stuff watching. Over their eyes. I'm watching. Well, the, I'm watching yeah. Discovery. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and and crocodilians are are an important part of the ecosystem, and and that's what this is. This is all about the what are, what are the what are the the, uh, the the beneficial. How do I put that? Um, why? Why have? Why, why, why concern? Why save them? Why, why care? Why, 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 why save should, them if they can eat you? Why should we care? Yes. Well, the you know they're an apex predator, which means they're at the top of the the food chain. Uh, most species of crocodilian have man or other crocodilians as their enemies. That's it. Um, what they found, in, in and we learned a lesson in the United States back in the 60s and 70s when the American alligator had declined severely in numbers. And that happened for two reasons. One, there was uh, habitat loss because of development. Florida was booming in the 50s and 60s, and people were building houses on canals next to alligators, and the alligators had to go. But they were also hunted uh, for meat and skin, um, uncontrolled. But what they found was uh, the bird population suffered because the alligators during the, the drier months would keep water holes open for the shorebirds and, and the, the birds and other animals right. that, that needed right. water. There was also a tourist attraction um, element to it. You know, when you go to Florida... You alligator know, wrestling. Well, alligator <laughs> wrestling. A lot of alligator wrestlers were out of work. But, so, uh, so other animals suffered. Um, so what they did was they had a more of a controlled um, management of the American alligators. You couldn't just go out and shoot one anymore or... You know, and they actually had uh, regulated farms where they would raise them, call them for their skins and meat. And then later on when their populations came back, and they would do some release too. They would breed them and, and right. release. And then later on when the numbers come back, came back, um, most all states now have a controlled limited hunting season where you could go out, uh, buy a license and, you know, go out and hunt alligators. So it's controlled. And this is happening in other countries. There, there's, there's value in, in their skin products and meat products, things like that. But as long as it's regulated to where it's not just, you know, all holds barred. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Then, now, then that can actually save a species. Now, when we have natural disasters like Katrina down in that in that area, did were there any studies done about how that affected the the alligators and the crocodiles? Um, I'm not aware of any, but uh, 
obviously, I'm sure when he, when waters like that come in and um, people are finding all kinds of wildlife where they normally in the wouldn't. sewers, right. like well, in the sewers, well, like on the rooftops. <laughs> you know? so, I don't know if that uh, was ever true. They said they found them. Yeah, like, I don't think there's the any truth to the story like about alligators in New York City yeah, sewers or something like. That. Yeah, I, I don't think they would survive <laughs> down there. So the uh, the population in the U.S. Uh, I, I'm assuming is much more healthy than yes. it has been. Yes. Uh, but other parts of the world. Well, the the Chinese counterpart, the Chinese alligator, mm-hmm. they estimate there are probably less than 150 adults. Wow. Living in the wild. Is it because the, over there they don't regulate the? Yeah, we the got wildlife the way we do here. Uncontrolled development. Hunting for you know for food, um, uh, pollution. Mm, you're right. So um, they used to be pretty widespread, and and now there's just, just very few. Is that the the biggest species of uh, crocodile? Is that uh, the what what is the biggest actual species? The is that... biggest is the saltwater crocodile. That one. Okay. That can get up that's to twenty the, feet. That's the twenty footer. Twenty feet. <laughs> yes, that wouldn't fit in this room. <laughs> I also learned wow. that here this evening. <laughs> <laughs> okay, about Jay, fifteen minutes ago. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Jay's on the chat board. I, I know. I understand. Jay, I'm oh, sorry. I just I, I was, so I'm, something uh, that big sure. is, is like a big dinosaur. I mean, yeah. it's huge. Well, the, um, the reason I ask is is because uh, some some of the ecosystems. Uh, uh, over China, wherever I don't know how they compare to ours here, so I don't know why, or how, or which one would be biggest. That that's why I'm asking. Yeah, in Northern Australia, um, people are regularly taken by um, saltwater crocodiles. Yikes! Ooh. A lot of swimming holes, you know, they'll have signs, you know, no swimming, and they'll have an image of a, you know, crocodile. <laughs> Attacking a swimmer, like well, I mean, you know, if you don't read right. the signs, it's like how many people see a wet paint sign and touch it to see? Yeah, it? yeah so, exactly. Yeah. But I, you know, people still do it and they still get eaten. <laughs> now you had uh, you had alluded to them being like big dinosaurs, and I think it was a nice segue into saying that you have a dinosaur exhibit out there at Clyde Peelings. Yeah, we've had that for uh, what six or seven years now. So, in there we have. Uh, static ones, stationary ones that are year all year round, but we bring in the, the moving ones with mm-hmm. the sound uh, every season, and they're there from uh, April until the end of October. So that's a, the, the animatronic ones. Yeah, they're they're just popular. Oh, that's cool. And we get that a, is really a cool. little bit different lineup each year, um, and the company that makes them comes out with new ones and. I'm sure the Velociraptor is probably one of the favorites, I'm sure. You know, the real Velociraptor <laughs> is probably no more than three feet tall. Really? It and looks, a bird. It looks like a big, ugly turkey. <laughs> <laughs> really? With teeth. That, with that teeth. could shred you apart, though, I'm sure. Well, not really. The... the the model, oh, the, the model Jurassic that they used. Park. Yeah, the Hollywood they, lied to yeah. you. Yeah, how about it? Well, exactly. The model right. they used for that was called, uh, it's more like a Utah Raptor. You know, not as exciting a name. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> that that is something that's, you know, like six, seven feet tall and, you know, is more fierce. So. Oh, so the, oh, man. <laughs> I'll never, I'll never. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, they're, they're still pretty cool. So this Saturday, Croctoberfest uh, to 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 benefit uh, 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 crocodilians, crocodilian conservation, crocodilian conservation. Uh, in addition to ourselves, uh, there's a number of breweries uh, that are participating. Um, let's see, Turkey Hill. Turkey Hill. Ripstein's. Ripstein's. Bullfrog. Marzoni's. Marzoni's. Um, Civil, War. Civil, Civil War. Civil Cider. War Cider. Our very own Q Brew. Our very own Q Brew. <laughs> Which we renamed all our beers to come <laughs> bring to this show. We've got the uh, the Clyde Orange Peelings Wheat. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got the Iguana Ichiban. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the Python Peanut Butter Pale Ale. And I don't remember the other one. 
What was the other <laughs> one? What is the other one? Uh, these, these folks are just... Oh, it's back in the fridge. Okay. Uh, well, the Croctoberfest. Oh, the Croctoberfest. The Croctoberfest. The Croctoberfest. <laughs> How the hell can we hear yeah. that? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still thinking about a 20 foot alligator and how cool that would be. That would be cool, except in here. <laughs> we don't have the room. Guys. No, it would be cool room. in here. Something else that they have. You see, you have what, 250 parakeets? Yeah, new new this summer was was our parakeet exhibit. Uh, it used to be the butterfly exhibit, and we tried something new for people, and it's been very popular. Mm. Bunch of parakeets, noisy, and. Do they land on you? Thing. Yeah, if you get a, a food stick, they'll come and land on your hand or on the stick and eat. Nice. They're a little more interactive, and you know, kids love them. So, yeah, that was fun. Now, something else that's very cool that they're doing is that they call it the flashlight safari. I don't know a whole lot about it. I, I unfortunately didn't look that far into it, but you can obviously explain that to us. Yeah, on the twenty-first and twenty-second of October. From 6 until 9, we have our flashlight safari. And that, that's always been popular. Sorry. That's where the the exhibits, where the snakes are, uh, the lights are kept off, and people bring flashlights, and they can look in. And many of these animals are active at night. That's just so, what Becky wants, to be I, in a darkened room go. with a bunch <laughs> of snakes. Yeah. I, I, I think only I'm, a flashlight. I think a member of our crew is mostly active at night. <laughs> Yes, I'm nocturnal. <laughs> He's nocturnal. <laughs> and we run three shows, and we bring out animals like uh, our, our great horned owl and yeah. kinkajou and a few other animals that are nocturnal typically. So it's fun. For Saturday, how many, uh, uh, how many tickets are we selling total? I think we're up to... Th- Topping it off at 300, I believe. 300 tickets. There's still tickets available. There's a handful left. There's a handful left. And if you're looking for tickets, how do we get them? You can call Reptile Land at 570-538-1869. Okay. You can buy them over the phone. You can stop in. Okay. So thirty awesome. uh, $30 and then 25 for members. And all the beer and sampling and food, food by the Genetti. And yeah, food by the Genetti. That's a bonus right sounds there. Great. Sounds great. Sweet. Food. <laughs> so what, what makes a, 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 mem- a member? So you have like a membership for... Reptile rep- land. For, to, for like visitation. Yeah. Right. Kind of what are, the, like what are the benefits of being a member? You can just come in and get in for free. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a good benefit right yeah, there. Yeah, it's perfect. Or you get discounts at, you know, some of these events. For special events. Right. Cool. What does a, what does a membership cost? Good question. Okay, <laughs> I'm full of them tonight. I I think it's thirty or forty dollars. I'm not. I don't. You know. I don't. That's uh, a fair deal, deal with that part. I deal with the animals, <laughs> the ones without two legs, <laughs> without any legs. <clears throat> All right. It's uh, Croctoberfest this Saturday from seven seven till ten. Seven till ten. Seven till ten. Q Brew will be there. Now, the cool thing about that is it's only 300 people are going to be allowed in. It makes it very, very good for us as brewers because we get to talk to yeah, everybody when yeah. the crowd's small like that and controlled like that. Yeah. You, one more thing I wanted to ask you, though. You're doing a, a live feeding at the time? Yeah, we're asking for volunteers on who wants to <laughs> be the food. No, actually, we're, we're volunteering, Sean. <laughs> we uh, At 9 o'clock, we will feed uh, Rocky and Adrian. Uh, some keepers will go in, and we actually have it so they'll they'll station for us, and they each have their place. Like Adrian will be in the deeper part, and they'll come up, and and on cue, they'll they'll open up their mouth, and they get what we call croc chow, their manufactured biscuits uh, diet, mm. and then uh, uh, Rocky goes to the shallower part and when he stands up and opens up his mouth he comes up to about almost chest high on you and that's impressive that's cool to see <laughs> that is wow. cool so there's so, there's gator chow yeah there is a, a, so uh, uh, so perina they, make that or they, what they, they, <laughs> call, they call it croc chow croc chow and it's it's a uh you know i mean normally you'd feed them mice rats whatever 
but this is a way of uh, combining all the, the essential nutrients for them, and right. there you go. All right. There's all good. kinds of chows out there. There's <laughs> monkey biscuits and crock chow. And Monkeys. <laughs> monkey biscuits. Monkey biscuits, <laughs> yeah. You name cool. it, they probably will make it. Nice. Okay, so we're. I think we're we're about due for a break. Correct. Okay, Jeff. It was great talking with you tonight. We're gonna see you on Saturday. Hang out, have some beers with us, and, and enjoy sure. the music. Uh, coming up next segment: singer songwriter Eric Val 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 Val. We'll have to ask him when he comes in. We're so prepared for this show. And Josh (laughs) Shock, this is The Craft brought to you by the Isle of Q Brewing Company. Thanks, Jeff. We'll be right back. All right. Thank you. (laughs) Another one. 
Welcome back to The Craft, brought to you by the Isle of Q Brewing Company, 6th University Avenue in downtown Seals Grove. We're not open yet. We're getting close. We will be soon. Thank you, Michael. Yes. Wow. Jeff was fantastic. Jeff was fantastic. I, 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 I was, I was kind of like in that zone where I get with the Discovery Channel. You know, I just sit and watch. And yeah, just wanted, to, just wanted to listen to what he had to say. He's he very did. knowledgeable. We didn't get into the enlarged uh, medulla oblongata. Or the, uh, they're so angry because they have all those teeth and no, and no, no toothbrush. And no, mama, mama always said, you're turning my bubble down? <laughs> Don't even talk into the mic. Oh, okay. Well, it was like booming in my... In my in my ears. Well, you can turn on your headset if you want. Okay, I just, you know, I was trying to yeah, adjust on the fly here. I, that was supposed to be behind the scenes, what I was, you know, doing over here. And That's okay. A... People are interested in, you know, this. No, they're not. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? We praised you earlier in the show. Well, Here's... now now I got a big head, and I'm like, hey. <laughs> He's trying to be a hey. bigger part of it now. <laughs> Oh, man. Je- yeah, Jeff was great. A- and uh, we- we've got uh, great musical guests tonight. Uh, we've got uh, Eric Val. How you doing? How you doing, Eric? Hi, Eric. We're getting better, man. We got brews, man. You we're got brews. Good. We're going to have we're brews. I-, I understand you put guys. And uh, Josh Chalk. We're not going to hear much from Josh, I guess. We didn't give him a mic. <laughs> You're better off. <laughs> Is he just kind of, he's the guy who's just there. He's, he's the, the guy that will say something he's not supposed to on a microphone. <laughs> yeah, that's me yeah, too. Yeah, he already knows. Is he your flavor flave? Is he your hype man? Mm, nah, I got to go teddy bear on that one. I think he's a little worse than you. He is. It's like Jay and Silent Bob here. <laughs> well, Mike already established out in the ports that you guys play both the rock and the rolls. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, guys, where 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 are, you, where are you all from? Well, I was I'm from outside of uh, Washington, in between Washington and Turville. You're from South Williamsport. Well, New Berlin, right? 
It's Berlin. Berlin. Berlin, not New Berlin. Not New Berlin. Not New Berlin. Not New Berlin. All right. Well, thanks for making the drive down. Hey, no problem. What uh, What are you doing there? I am <laughs> sending a note over to our engineer. Oh, okay. You know what? <laughs> you know what we ought to have is those like those cables they have at, at Hooters where oh, they send yeah, them. where they just send them down. That would be awesome. We, we typically we, we, we could totally rock that out old school. See what happens when you try to make him part of the show. Hey, Becky's part of the show. Steady Eddie. Steady Eddie. Steady Eddie's here. Hey, Becky, welcome back to the show. It's, uh, it's, it's good nice to be to, here. It's nice to see you. It's super nice to see you. <laughs> so, you guys play together all the time, or yeah, every yeah every live show. Last well, you've been with me for two and a half years now. Almost three. About that. Something like that. About that. We lost track a long time. Lost track. Well, they've been together for quite a while, but he was saying he hasn't seen them in three weeks, and he really, really missed them. Not really. But <laughs> 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 It'll get worse, Chris. How'd you guys meet? I think it was through a mutual friend. Wasn't it wasn't Mike. Mike kind of, Davis. Yeah, Mike Davis introduced us yeah. years ago. He's a he's a bass player in, uh, what's his band? Uh, dugout? Yeah, he's in Dugout now. Yeah, he introduced he's us. still in Dugout. Okay. Good friend of ours. They're awesome. I've seen Doug out, I think, also, we've talked about this before, um, through Lifting Little Lives. I think Doug out has done some, yeah. some yeah. benefits yeah. with them yep. as well. Awesome. But, uh, well, before you get set to mount some faces here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we're in we're electric. We ain't going to try that. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you guys have coming up? Uh, just new album. We're going to be in there. For, like I said, we're in the middle of it right now. It'll be another year before it's even done all right rebuilding a website everything plus we work 16 hour days 12 hour days 13 hour days what do you guys do <laughs> what, what, what's the day jobs uh i'm a equipment operator welder maintenance man for uh sand quarry and then i build the wooden spools for general cable <laughs> great big ones <laughs> yeah that is that's rock and roll <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Not cool. Really. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> you just got to pay the bill somehow. We just stay there. You know how many dining room tables you made for college kids? <laughs> I had one of those tables. <laughs> Lots. Outdoor picnic table. Yeah. You see how many people have them at River Lots, too? Yes. Yeah. They make great picnic tables. Yeah, they do. I just don't ever want to see one. <laughs> <laughs> when I worked at Chef Boyardee for years, I, and I still, I still can't eat raviolis, so I understand that. I wouldn't want to see another spool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that a lot from Chef Boyd. He works. He even went on the brewery. So you're working... <laughs> So, so you're working on an album. Uh, we're gonna we uh, we're gonna hear some uh, original music tonight. Yeah. All right. Well, we, uh, we're not gonna play. We're gonna play one off the new album. There's okay. a lot, and we haven't even rehearsed yet. We're still just kind of knocking them back and forth. That's okay. We don't practice anything. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> we like it on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't either. So we, we we might screw this up. I don't know. What's this? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's original. Like, Nobody's yeah. gonna know. Yeah. yeah. We, we just fake it. We'll what, fake it. What are we gonna call this? What's that? What, what's this called? The next first song? Yeah. Uh, it's a song called Beauty Queen. Beauty Queen. How'd you come up? How'd I come up with it? Yeah. Well, I mean, what's this about? Oh, the the typical thing, ex-girlfriend. You okay. Know? All right. You'll tell by the lyrics when you hear it that <laughs> things did not end well like any one of my relationships. <laughs> and I'll bet there's some people out there watching going, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. got some fans out there right <laughs> <Yeah>. now. <laughs> well, I don't know about fans. I think a couple of them are watching like, just please screw up so I can laugh. <laughs> Well, we appreciate the viewers anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll do the Mari Povich thing then when, when, when it's over. Right. <laughs> Just do a rose to be better yet. All right. You ready? <laughs> yeah. You guys set? You good to go, Josh? Okay. Yup. Bought you some flowers today to let you know how much I care But all you have to say, you can set them anywhere Every time I try to do something nice, you just say it won't suffice at all Oh my little beauty 
Dairy Queen I'm so tired of your scene Now I think it's time to leave I've tried so hard to satisfy It's time to say goodbye I made a nice dinner today Candle lights up for two but all you have to say, I expect a better from you. Oh. Every time I try to do something nice, you just say it won't suffice at all. Oh, my little beauty queen, I'm so tired of your scene. Now I think it's time to leave. I've tried so hard to satisfy. It's time to say goodbye Josh, if you would The only reason I have stayed is that I'd hope for you to change someday Oh my little beauty queen, I'm so tired of your scene Now I think it's time to leave I've tried so hard to satisfy It's time to say goodbye So vain, you try me and sing your pain. So vain, you try me and sing your pain. So vain, you try me and sing your pain. So vain, you try me and sing. Derek Powell, Josh Shock. <laughs> Sorry, bud. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> That's what I got to do. That I got to make post-it notes for you, and every time something goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're, you're kind of going the Taylor Swift way, the way she writes songs about exes. You're kind of doing with the same that thing. one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time I've ever heard her put that way. <laughs> what was her name? Uh, uh, well, I don't yeah. think we want to do that. Uh, yeah. That might Eek. be like slander or something I might get sued for. <laughs> okay, I, I tried. <laughs> so you said you, you have, you're playing out with a full band? Uh, we were. Coming out? Yeah, we, we'll be back at it again. We played Smite Fest. That was the last one we did this summer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, 100 degrees. <laughs> Nearly passed out on stage. Yeah. Awesome. Smite Fest? Yeah, that's a, yeah, up in Milton. They have it. Well, it used to be up oh, that Steel campground. campground. Yeah, Steel Seeds up in Milton. Okay, I mean, okay. That's, I think that's their second year down there. They used to be up above Jersey Shore and do it up there. That was It was a real nice place, and then they found this. They don't want it. Okay. I like the festival. Yeah, like like an all-day type of festival? That's three days. Yeah, yeah. Actually, they start Thursday night with a couple acoustic bands, and then Friday around noon they kick it off, and it goes all the way up through Sunday. Awesome. They bring bands in from New York. They had couple different um more well-known acts like 40 below summer and stuff like that if we want to catch you live coming up in the next couple of months how do we find you actually it won't be much coming up live for a little bit but if you can't have facebook twitter okay we do say if we do anything it's going to be posted so all right well what's the address that we can get you at uh ericvalmusic.com and that's and I was sure in the process of rebuilding that too. <laughs> you caught us in the we got you caught us in the rebuilding stage and recording stage. <laughs> well, you work you work sixteen hours a day, and I've seen you. You've actually you do all your own videos and all your editing and all that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very time consuming on that too. And you learn a few new curse words working with new programs, which you which we were talking about earlier. It's, right, makes it a nightmare sometimes. Like I said, I I lost all my editing skills when we got away from. Uh, or the movie maker. Yeah. Nah, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> that's why we need Sean. Sean, that's why you're so important. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, good. He he shorted his own mic this yeah. time. Yeah, right. <laughs> But hey, you. Uh, speaking of videos that you're working on or have the concept for right now, uh, something that I saw on your Facebook page, uh, you had a tragedy in your life, or a friend lost his life due to an addiction, and you're you're. Yeah, you're... it was as far as I know. There was I've heard different things. Like I said, I'm I grew up in Montana. Actually, he was out there, and I haven't been home probably five years, so I had no idea what was going on. He, from the way I undertook it from most people, it was an accidental overdose. I don't think he was doing it as hardcore as whatever some people were making it out to be but he did and but, pass it away from him. but you're turning that into a tribute now yeah it, well it's not exactly a tribute to him it's it was definitely inspired by him it's the lyrics are more meant for people that have lost somebody in this fashion whether it be through a drug overdose alcoholism suicide it's more about the selfishness of the drug or the mentality okay and you are you're you're doing casting for a, a new video for that yes yeah i've I just kind of put the word out as if anybody's been through this, I just need a, if you want to be a part of it, the person you lost, whether it be family member, friend, loved one, whomever, is to put, just send me a 20 second video of you holding a picture of them. It's, I kept it simple because if I would have made directions, people would have got confused, but just told them to take a 20 second video, holding the picture of it, and we'll get you in the video. Because it, it's not just about him, it's the like the whole the whole problem. The whole problem. That around, sounds yeah. powerful. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can picture that. I yeah. mean, that really sounds, that, that sounds amazing. Good cause. It's, and lately it's, around here, it's been a serious problem. Yes. You know, we've had several, every every few weeks we're having it seems like it, yeah. around yeah. here. I myself have been clean and sober since May 2nd, 2002. Wow. So I yeah. see, <laughs> not really a clap, but... <laughs> I'm always drinking root beer on the show, but um, in our community and going to meetings around here, um, you know, just this past, I'd even say past year has been really, really difficult around here for the community. Mm -hmm. You know, we're losing a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I think any way that you can <coughs> reach, reach um, people in that situation is beautiful especially with music so i'm looking yeah. forward to checking out the the song and the video and it's a great project yeah, like i said it'll be a little while because i want to get as many people in and on as i possibly awesome. can and then like we were talking about the editing it's going to take yeah. a long time but definitely worth the wait so it took it, it'll, and some strange things happened with that song a couple days after he passed i just had some lyrics in my head and kind of kept messing with it and within a month, I had some music to it. And I'm like, okay, I started recording it. And the day of his anniversary, and actually the time I got the phone call on the day that he passed, I finished the song wow. and sent it to a couple of people. And they're like, you really, you finished? I said, I finished on the exact minute. There's just weird things like that would happen. Wow. Especially recording in the studio. So weird wow. things would happen and just, it fell together. And I was like, this, <laughs> even my, my sound manager, Richard Ruby, was like, yeah. He says, this, this is meant to be. He says, this is going to be good. So that's going to be on the album? Yes, that will be on the album. Okay, uh, if uh, if we were to look, if if we were to look at a pie chart of uh, completedness of uh, where where you want to be with the album, where where, where you at? Fifty <laughs> percent? Yeah, I'd probably give it thirty five right now. Thirty five? Okay. It takes a lot. Yeah, well, it it does. crazy. And with me, I'll, I'll go. We'll go record something. I'll listen to it for a couple of weeks, and if it sticks in my head. And I'll know it's good. And if I don't, if it doesn't stay in my head, I was like, okay, we got to redo this now. And we'll go back in. <laughs> it drives everybody nuts, but it <laughs> ends up being, it helps out. So you're absolutely going to keep us posted when that thing drops, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. You, everybody will be like, it'll be like the first album I did. Like, are you done yet? And I, no. <laughs> be another six months. <laughs> so when, when you do actually finish the video for the, the song you were just talking about, will that be on Eric? On uh, ericvalmusic.com? Is that where you can find yeah, it? Yeah, okay. it'll be on YouTube and anywhere else. It'll be on my Facebook page. You'll be able to find it real easy. Awesome. You guys going to rock another tune for us? Sure. I need a little sip for yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Gotta wet the whistle. You sip it up, fellas. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely encouraged here at this program. <laughs> yeah, speaking of which, we got to try this. You guys' home brew. I didn't. We got to try that out. You guys got anything laying around? Oh, yeah, we, 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 we we've got uh, we've got probably what? How many gallons of beer right now? Uh, 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 just just under what we're allowed to have. Just legally. under 
just under no. the yeah the um, yeah what, what we're allowed to have on yes yes but uh, what what we can fix you up with uh, when we go on a break or when we wrap things up we've got the Ichiban out there on tap okay which is Sign a Japanese up. style beer the single mashed in Japanese style beer yes right <laughs> one devil I'm filling in for Jay <laughs> Josh is smiling he loves beer he's ready for it yep <laughs> we're gonna make wifey proud tonight on a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a song. That's a th- <laughs> I think we're going to make that a country, country song. What do you think, John? I said country. country. <laughs> I get blamed for everything that happens to him, by the way. As soon as anything goes wrong, wifey's calling me. What'd you do? I don't remember. He's at home. I don't. He's not my problem now. He's yours. It's all good, <laughs> it's all good then. Yeah. <laughs> So what do you got for us next? Uh, we'll play a song. If, if you only knew, I think you're feeling that one. Are you feeling yeah. it? Are you feeling yeah. it? Yeah, of course yeah. you are. Whatever. <laughs> All right, we'll give her a try. Give her a shot. Coming back here for empty walls. Now it's so clear you'll never come. This feeling of loneliness sits in all around me. Funky's popping again. <laughs> 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 
too. I thought it was my guitar for a second. Like, Wait a minute, I ain't plugged in. I thought you broke it. <laughs> broke it. First time. Josh Shock. He, you got a glorious beard there, man. I'm digging <laughs> that. I am digging yeah, that. I feel terrible yeah. that we don't have a microphone for you. Just yell loud. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> but you were you met three years ago. What were you doing before that? Were you in bands before that? A couple. One was Hazardous Waste, where we played down downtown. Down for, at the uh, Dome. <laughs> on Pine Street. Did you ever hear of First Friday up in Williamsport, Pennsylvania? Yes. We played for that a couple times and just local things around. Then me and another guy did a uh, acoustic act, and I have a mic rising above me. <laughs> <laughs> another guy did a. Uh, it's it's the budget. We do everything here. <laughs> it's okay. And another guy and myself did an acoustic act. Just me and him, kind of like this, but we did a lot of covers then. That's about it. All right, well, you, you have a chance now because it, I know a little bit of your history about how you upset the wife from time to time. Maybe you give her a little shout-out tell her you love her. Do it. <laughs> love you, Stephanie. <laughs> I don't Aww. think she's watching, though. Why not? I don't know. You get, you get that feeling? I, I got a feeling she's watching. I do, too. Just to make sure we don't do anything stupid, which she has no control of anyway. It's possible. <laughs> Very possible. <laughs> Stephanie, I'll take good care of your man tonight. Here. <laughs> not not the way that sounds. That sounds really awful. Yeah, then you'll be on yeah. the list, too. I, 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 look, I'm on a short Eggs leash. I am on a <laughs> okay. I am on a short leash also. Yeah, right. So. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I guess that backfired. Well, he does kind of gravitate. Every guest, every week we have different guests, and he picks one, he kind of gravitates right to him. I know Trevor Bewley, he's your dog, and uh, you know you wanted to go have bacon and, and eggs with Anthony Latt, and, and you wanted to go hang out in, in, uh, in Marley's basement with and, Bill. And I want to sit in Josh's living room and grow a beard. <laughs> More than welcome to. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this couch is comfy. It is very comfy. All right. <laughs> so uh, is, you're you're working hard in the studio. Not um, um, not a whole lot of live stuff coming up. Um, not right now. No. Not we're, right now. We're gonna okay. rearrange the set list and do all that. And that'll be fun. Yes, it will. A few nights at Jesse's drinking some beer and going over a set list mm -hmm. three hundred times just to see if it all fits correctly and then go back and try it again a week later. <laughs> What's the uh, typical recording session look like? I mean, how does that start? What's the creative process on that? As far as just from beginning to end on the recording process? Uh, no, just, the, uh, okay, we're going to cut something today. We're going to try to get this done. This is what we got laid out. What's that like? Uh, Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> With me, sometimes, yes. A little picky. But uh, usually I keep us very... Uh, very few people in the studio as possible. Usually, if I'm doing a, don't do drum checks, I have me, Richard, and the drummer, and that's it. We sit there and crank that out, mm -hmm. and bring in the next person. Because you don't want all those distractions there. You want to you want to get the best track from them people as possible. Whichever musician is playing, you want the best per, uh, performance from them. Right. So we focus on them. You want to be in time, tune, pitch, so on and so forth, and then bring in the next person, and then go home, listen to it. If you don't like it, go back, try it again. <laughs> <laughs> Which I drive every one of them nuts. I, I don't like this. You got to come back in. All right, I'll be right there. You got a case of beer for me? Yeah, I'll bring a case. Of beer. Yeah, all right. <laughs> it's like moving, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, where do you record at? Do you have a, a certain studio that you work with? Do you have your own little home studio? Uh, yeah, I only record at one studio around here, uh, Green Valley Recording out, out out back of Hughesville. Between. That was our it, first demo. Ah. Uh, really? From the Peanut Gallery. <laughs> Everybody yeah, knows Richard. There isn't a person anywhere around here that doesn't know Richard. I was 80... 89? 88, 89. Wow, so you're, uh, yeah, you're going reel to reel back then. Yes, oh, yes. So it was uh, before the ADAT machine. Yeah. yeah. I would not miss that. No. <laughs> it's a cool studio. Really cool. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely is. It's yeah, he, it's been the same ever since. But it's uh, the sounds you get out of that are amazing because of the old wood and how he yeah. has it set up. I well, plus yeah, 
That's the main reason why I court here. You get such beautiful sounds. And Richard and I have been working together for over a decade. So as soon as I walk in, he already knows what I'm going to do. He already knows how I want my amp set up. And so it's just like walking in with an old friend. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, I think we made some uh, new friends here tonight, certainly. Yeah. All right. Now, how many previous albums do you have out? Uh, I have an EP that I released back in 2011 that has four songs on it. And then those four songs went on to the the full the full length, which was released in 2012. And then from there, I released a couple singles over the years. Now, is there a place, iTunes or your own .com, that people can go and purchase the album? Uh, you can get anywhere. Uh, the yeah, iTunes, Amazon, CD Baby, and you can stream it to anywhere. You could you just type in the name in Google, you'll find it. <laughs> All right. I have, yep. good, I have good computer people. They help me out. It's not computer <laughs> literate. It's like, what is, no, here, you do this. Me too. Yep. Me too. What's that I like? I took typewriting no. <laughs> in high school. Yes. I, I took too. typewriting. I failed miserably. <laughs> <laughs> With Mrs. Schaefer. Mrs. Trasher. So, you got one more song in you? Yeah. Okay, okay. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. You're going to play us out. We're, we're going to need a little mic adjustment. You're going to need a little mic. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. You're going solo on this one. All right. Becky we'll Blue is going to... I got you. She, she's got that. Uh, there you go. So, what we're going to do... Um, you want to try it? Yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry. He's, he's yelling in my ear. All what right. we're going to do, we're going to ask you to play something, a, a few... I'm going to give you some damn instructions, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a little background uh, uh, instrumental stuff, and then you can jump into it, because i got some stuff i got to say. Background on the song? Is that what you're saying? No, just whatever, man. Just, just, <laughs> just, 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 just He's going to do his industry read. My little your... industry oh, read. Oh, okay. And, and then when he's done, you just go right into the song. Or whatever you want to do at that point. We're ended. Sean, or Sean likes it when everybody just ends abruptly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Do not do that, please. <laughs> <laughs> Folks in Facebook land and uh, wherever you're going to pull us down from, thanks for tuning in tonight. Come see us at Croctoberfest. Come see us at Croctoberfest. We'd like to thank Jeff Cook from Clyde Peeling's Reptile Land. Awesome stuff. Very informative. Got an enlu enlarged and medulla obligata out of that one. And uh, our musical guest, Eric Val, Josh Chalk. This is the craft brought to you by the Isle of Q Brewing Company, 6th University Avenue. Play us out, fellas. All right, we're going to do one off the new album for you guys. This song called The Past.
will always be a part of me And I will choose who I'll see The darker side of me It's a penny that you won't forgive So I can live Past will always be a part of me And I will choose who I'll see The darker side of me It's a penny that you won't forgive So I can live So I can live. So I can live. So I can live. So I can live. All right. All right. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Thanks for coming. Hey, thanks for having us. Let's drink some beers, guys. All right. <laughs> Agreed. We're out.